For centuries, the market town of Chesterfield has been famous mainly for its crooked spire, but over the last few weeks, the old landmark has had a rival. They may play in the second division, they may lack the glamour of the Manchester United, the Arsenals and the Liverpools, but Chesterfield Football Club have risen from obscurity to stand at the very threshold of one of the greatest occasions the game has to offer, an FA Cup final at Wembley. <laughs> Victories in earlier rounds against Bury, Scarborough, Bristol City, First Division Bolton Wanderers and Nottingham Forest from the Premiership led to a quarter-final tie against fellow Second Division side Wrexham. One goal settled it, it came in the 58th minute. The scorer, Chris Beaumont. But there were still 32 nerve-wracking minutes before the whole of Chesterfield could really celebrate. It's the build-up, isn't it, of the tension in these last few minutes to eventually get what we were all after is, uh, is a feeling that we'll never forget. It was one of the tensest days of my career, and I think of everybody in, in Chesterfield that last... 10 minutes when we were one nil up and dying for the final whistle. Although we were never really under serious problems, the, the game lingered on and lingered on and everybody was just relieved really when the whistle did go. Brilliant, brilliant, it's just great. Yeah, really good. Fantastic. It's better than sex. Tell me, Mum, me, Mum, I won't be home for tea. We're going to Wembley. Predictable reactions after the game from the fans, but even before the quarter-final, the town of Chesterfield had been consumed by cup fever. The players even recorded an FA Cup song. Normal practice for most sides just before the final, but the last eight was already one step further than the club had ever been before in its 131-year history. Now that the semi-final against the all-star premiership side Middlesbrough beckons, the town centre's festooned with good wishes for the team. The tickets for the semi-final went like hotcakes too. When they went on sale, the queues stretched right round the Saltergate ground. There'll be 22,000 from North Derbyshire at Old Trafford. It really is on high at moment town. You know, lads are out and it's just everybody's got a buzz about it. The new ground planned next year, so, you know, looking forward. Bit of money at bank, can't beat it. I've had a few people coming in saying it's the best thing that's ever happened to the club and they, well there's been one or two watching it for like 50, 60 years and they've never known anything like it and I suppose in a way it's a reward for them, you know, they're stuck with us when we've had the bad times and now they're having a good time they're going to really enjoy it. Cup fever has even penetrated the normally serene surroundings of Chatsworth House, the ancestral seat of the Duke of Devonshire. He's more of a racing man, but he is the president of Chesterfield Football Club. Sadly, I'm afraid I've not been a very good president. I have been to see them play, but not nearly as 
often as I would have liked or indeed should. But I'm a very keen supporter, uh, and I can tell you where they are in the table and uh, uh, which division they're in. Um, and of course, this year uh, it's been uh, one of ever increasing excitement. The Duke will listen to the game on radio. Failing eyesight makes attending matches difficult these days, but he has bought tickets for a hundred of those who work on the estate in the gardens, the house and the shops. There's been talk about it for the last few weeks, so yes, they're very exciting. The phone in my office was the football hotline from all parts of the estate and uh, by five o'clock that night they've gone. What's going to happen to the house? Because it's obviously open, so well, what's going to happen? It's going to be a ghost house. <laughs> Perhaps so, no, there will be enough left, thankfully. There'll be enough people left to keep the place going. What would it mean for you, as, as the president of the club, for Chesterfield to get to Wembley? Oh, it would give me enormous pleasure. Uh, Chesterfield is one of the nicest towns in England. I've had uh, more than my fair share of good fortune in life, but not least, for any of you who were born in 1945 and again in 1950. I stood for Parliament as a Tory, and I didn't get many votes, but I like to think I made a lot of friends, and I've kept a very close connection with the town ever since, and the mayor is very good to me and asked me to attend uh, on this day, so, uh, so the town means a great deal to me, and of course I mustn't get carried away. But having got so far, and with the draw they've got, I mean, I would much rather, uh, I was very glad they got rid of the Royal Wimbledon or Chelsea. Uh, of course, they're, they're the outsiders. But I say, what must be an advantage to them, whereas unlike the Littlesborough, they've got absolute, they've done a miracle, they've got absolutely nothing to lose. Since the quarter-final victory, the Chesterfield management have been trying to put the semi-final to the back of their minds. The team is still in with a chance of making the second division playoffs and the possibility of another trip to Wembley with promotion to the first division at stake. They were there only two seasons ago when they beat Bury to be promoted to Division 2. with the long throw. Oh, and missed by Lucchetti, here's Robinson, must be a goal! 2-0 Chesterfield, Phil Robinson. But form has dipped in recent weeks with only one win out of their last ten league matches, six of them drawn. Last weekend, the game at Saltergate against Gillingham started well. The goal from Andy Morris put them ahead. But in the second half, Gillingham hit back to take a 2-1 lead. To make matters worse, in the incident that led to the visitors' equaliser, goalkeeper Billy Mercer took a knock in the ribs. He couldn't continue and faced a race against time to be fit for the semi-final. It took a goal in injury time from Jonathan Howard to salvage another point. You know, at first I made, I made uh, comments in the programme in my little column about saying I didn't think it'd affect us and hope it won't, but looking back it has affected us. It, you can't, it can't not affect the team. It's such a massive game for a club of this size and they're not used to dealing with it. The players are not used to dealing with it when you're preparing for games and people all they want to talk about is the semi-final. Well, there's nothing more important than the FA Cup semi-final from this club's point of view. But there's never a deal can be done between, oh, we'll save ourselves for that and we'll keep that and do that, because you never know when you're going to win a game. So there's never any, any issue of when it's that instead of that. Uh, so we're just getting on with things as best as we can. Other distractions have also made it difficult to concentrate on the league. John Duncan's done a marvellous job. Those players will have a great day out. 
and uh, they could win. You know, I'm a Middlesbrough-born uh, person, but they could win. You know, anything can happen in that 90 minutes. I'm a little bit split in fairness because Viv, you know, my friend and Brian up at Middlesbrough, but um, Viv won't see this on Yorkshire, so I'll see that. <laughs> I'll say that um, I hope the Chess will win it. When you go to semi-finals, I think that naturally the Middlesbrough will be favourites, but I think that on the day anything can happen. None of the players are down today. Are Earlier this no, week, no, no, no. Tuesday morning, another award for their defeat of Premiership Nottingham Forest in the fifth round, the Littlewoods FA Cup Giant Killers Trophy. The media descends on Saltergate. Anyone to like any 50-50 draw ticket? Drawn it half time, paid out at full time. And that night, another league game against Graham Taylor's Watford, but Old Trafford's on everyone's minds. Ravenelli, watch out! 2-0, just Phil. There you are. And I said that without moving my lip. <laughs> However, managing England has given the man now in charge of Watford a rather more realistic outlook. I've got to go with Middlesbrough. I have to go with Middlesbrough. Um, I don't want to do. I think I'll be like a lot of people. I really do want to, uh, Chesterfield together. I, I have happy memories of this place. As a very young lad, my father, who's a reporter for the uh, Scunthorpe Evening Telegraph, but I remember him bringing me as a lad in short pants here to Saltergate in the mid-1950s. Uh, not a lot has changed. <laughs> not a lot has changed. <laughs> With several key players carrying big league injuries, Duncan puts out a scratch side. Not many clues here for the watching Middlesbrough manager, Brian Robson. Purists would say it's a typical lower division scrap. Plenty of effort, little finesse, and not surprisingly few chances. It ended in a goalless draw. Well, boys. Well, the boys, the boys, solid at the back there. Yeah. Now you can concentrate on the cup. Well, that's right. You know, it's just, the next game is the big one, so we'll give that everything we've got now. For Chesterfield's players, a chance to get an idea of what's in store on Sunday. A full guided tour of the semi-final venue, Old Trafford, the home of Manchester United. What's the point in having a ticket? <laughs> it's got a cantilever roof, which extends right the way around the stadium. No columns anywhere to spoil your view. And just underneath the roof at the back, right the way around the stadium, is 180 private boxes. Uh, they do differ in price. But far from leaving the players in awe, it may prove to give the second division side a psychological lift. I think what actually happened there was there was a few wires crossed because when we got there, there was a lad who said, yeah, I'll show you around, and it ended up, like you say, like an official tour, and that wasn't the idea. The idea was just to have a look around the changing rooms, have a look on the pitch, just to generally, so that I gather the manager was thinking, you don't want to run out and just think, God, you know, what a size this is. Um, yeah, and it was... It was not my ideal cup of tea to be sitting in their players' lounge being told he was a captain and he was a captain in their history. But, you know, it was just a few wires crossed. But, yeah, we enjoyed it. Nonetheless. We had a laugh about it afterwards. We were like little school kids being shown around there. But uh, it was a little bit uh, patronising to get there and be treated as if, like, God, these are all legends and you're just mere lower division footballers, you know. But such is life. There is a stark contrast between Chesterfield and their semi-final opponents, Middlesbrough. Janino, Ravenelli, Emerson, Beck, Fester, they're called the Foreign Legion. Middlesbrough's team's been assembled at a cost of £22.5 million. Chesterfield's has cost £415,000. Oh, well, it's a different league we're in, isn't it? A different financial league as much as football league. Um, but. You know, we'll see on Sunday they'll be standing against one another and the game will go and we'll see then whether there is a difference in how much it is.
Italian striker Fabrizio Ravanelli, who supposedly paid £40,000 a week, is Middlesbrough's record signing. He cost £7 million from Juventus. Paul Holland is Chesterfield's record signing. He cost £150,000 from Sheffield United. He'll be lining up in midfield against Juninho, the tiny Brazilian rated amongst the world's top players. People could say that you are the Juninho of, uh, <laughs> of Chesterfield. I don't think so. I think that I'm really comparable to him, really. But, you know, it's like there's Emerson, there's Ravanelli. You know, there's so many players who everyone looks up to. And it's going to be, as I say, a bit awe-inspiring when we're warming up, looking over the halfway line at them. It's going to be interesting pitting your wits against like international stars. Um, then you can actually see how really good you are or how really crap you are, to be honest. I think once you're out there, you forget, you know, you don't just stand there waiting for a corner thinking, oh, there's Ravanelli or there's Beck. You know, you just it's just another player um, trying to score a goal and you're trying to stop him from scoring. So I, I don't think once you're out there, it's just when you're reading the papers in the build-up and things like that, or when you're watching, you know, different games and you see him about, you think, oh, he's a good player or whatever. Um, but once you're on the pitch, then you've got to do the best you can to stop them. And, uh, you know, that'll be down to me and my colleagues to do that. John Duncan's guided Chesterfield to one cup success against Middlesbrough already. If he scores, Chesterfield will be through. He was in his first spell as manager at Saltergate when the two clubs met in the League Cup in 1983. That's it! Ironically, the last time Chesterfield reached the fifth round of the FA Cup, they also beat Middlesbrough on the way. That was in 1950 and lifelong fan Brian Knight was at that game with his father. The team went on to lose in the next round to Chelsea. Dad said after the Chelsea game, because I was crying then, John, he did say, well, never mind if they ever get through to Wembley to play in the FA Cup, I will take you to Wembley. And this was every schoolboy's dream, to, to see Wembley, they might, you know, get, they might just have been there. And uh, unfortunately, Dad died four years ago. But I'm sure if we get through to Wembley this time, my dad will be up there looking down with his flat cap on and his blue and white scarf. Sure. Did you ever think, ever dream, your wildest dreams, that Chesterfield will get to an FA Cup mm, semi-final? No, not really. We don't think we're going to get this far, but we've done it, haven't we? But, no, we don't think that. I don't think anyone in Chesterfield thought they were going to get this far. No one in England thought they were going to get this far, I don't suppose. Have you ever scored any in England? This is where I used to get most of my penalties. There are plenty of connections between the two clubs. John and Roy Hickton are former professional footballers, both born in Chesterfield. Roy played for his hometown club and still helps run the under-16 schoolboy side. John played more than 400 times for Middlesbrough and scored 159 league goals for them. Where do your loyalties lay in this one? Uh, very divided. I had 13 happy years at Middlesbrough, but being a Chesterfield boy, I'd love to see you know Chesterfield do well. I don't really mind at the end of the day who's going to win because it's going to be a first time for either of them. So you know I'll be pleased either way. And Roy, no question of divided loyalties for no, you. No, uh, uh, for me, uh, I mean I've always sort of looked for Middlesbrough's results with John playing for them, but uh, there's no way this time it's, it's got to be Chesterfield for me. A good cross, in comes Hickton. A goal, a magnificent goal. Lane I do go back to watch them occasionally. And I'm always very excited. You know, the modern day football seems to be a lot different now. Uh, I think it's a bit faster than when we used to play. I don't know whether there's, there's much skill now. I think players are getting better, but uh, the atmosphere at Old Trafford is going to be unbelievable. And it's the people, you know, the team that could uh, take the pressure on the day that's probably going to you know, we'll do it. Middlesbrough will, of course, be used to such an atmosphere. Only last weekend they played Leicester City at Wembley in the final of the Coca-Cola Cup. Inevitably, Ravenelli gave them the lead. But a desperately disappointed Borough were denied in the last minute of extra time. They'll replay next week, but their attention now is focused on Chesterfield. We were delighted when this draw came out, um, the same as what Wimbledon or, or Chelsea would have been. 
Well, if you underestimate anybody, um, like, you know, that's when you do get kicked up the backside. And we, we're not going to underestimate them. I mean, we've had them watched a lot. It's very important for, uh, for uh, everybody uh, player, for uh, everybody supporter. Uh, uh, it's uh, very important for the, the team. Amongst the crowd at Wembley last Sunday, a man born and bred in Chesterfield. Before a career as a goalkeeper with Arsenal, he used to watch the Spyrites from the window of his girlfriend's house, which overlooked the ground. Well, even when I was a little kid living in Chesterfield, you know, I mean, you could dream then, but certainly not having seen what I've seen through the years and the football career that I've had. I mean, it, it's almost, uh, it is almost unbelievable. Um, it's just now, you know, could it really, really be that you could have Chesterfield beat Middlesbrough and go to a final? I mean, it wouldn't be the most astonishing story ever, really, in the history of the FA Cup. Meanwhile, for Chesterfield's goalkeeper, injured in last Saturday's match, it's been a painful week. Will he be fit for the big day? Yeah, it's very tender at the moment. But, um, I feel like we've turned the corner in the last couple of days, so hopefully I'll make it. And how much does it mean to you to play in this game? Well, like everybody else at the club, it's the biggest game of our careers. Um, it means so much to the town um, and everyone wants to be part of it. It means so much too to Chesterfield's brightest young star. Kevin Davis missed the quarter-final, suspended for his part in a brawl that marred an earlier league game against Plymouth. He's grateful he's got another chance to prove himself against the best. You know, all the players will want to see how they can compete against players on that level and um, you know it's going to be a, a good test for us and you know we're all going to be in the shot window as well so you know it's, it's going to be a, a great day for, for the team, the fans and you know the players, families and wives and everything. It's going, you know we're all looking forward to it and we want to get on with it. Different players have different ways of relaxing but none of them are in any doubt Sunday could be the most important day of their football careers so far. Old Trafford, they call it the theatre of dreams. On Sunday against Middlesbrough, all Chesterfield will be hoping that dreams can come true. To dream the impossible dream To fight the unbeatable foe To bear with unbearable sorrow to run where the brave dare not go I hope they do it. I mean, there's a first time for everything and uh, I just wonder if it's going to be the year of the underdog and uh, Chesterfield actually go all the way. What a story that is. It'd be fantastic. Somewhere along the line it's got to happen and uh, I think I'd die a happy man, you know, if I could see Chesterfield get to an FA Cup final. You've got to think that you're going to win every game. This is no point in even going out there in the first place. And at the end of the day, when you go out on the pitch, it's only 11 players against 11 players, no matter what names, faces, how much money they earn, whatever. They're only two games away from Europe, I suppose, if you look at it that way. What do you think I actually think to us? <laughs> Our victory, I would say statistically, and on the facts of it, is unlikely. But unlikely things can happen at different times. It's a dream, isn't it? It is a dream, and the dream's still going. Let's see if it can go past Sunday. This is my choice!